What is up guys, Daddy's here. We're taking it out of the office today, gonna go for a ride to actually show you guys what I'm gonna be talking about later. But in this video guys, I wanna talk about what you should be doing, you know, um, after drop shipping or after FBA. And again, I think it's better than all this stuff. It's better than drop shipping. It's better than FBA. It's better than print on demand. And it's and it, it's still in the e-commerce space, but it's not something that you see a lot of people talking about. And it's not something you see a lot of people doing, but it's something I actually did before even got started drop shipping. I failed at it and I lost $10,000 doing it, but I learned a lot and that's what kind of led me to success in drop shipping. But after after I got good at that, I actually started moving back towards what um, I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So we're gonna go for a ride um, and and just discuss it, guys. I'm excited to show you. Let's go. I think I need to get gas too, dude. This baby eats that shit up. We're gonna go get gas and um, start talking about this, guys. So what I do want to talk about, right? I don't want to just. I want to cut right right to the chase, but I want to talk about private label, okay? Some of you guys might have heard of that, some of you guys have no idea what that is, but essentially guys, you don't need to create your own product, so it's not like you're going to manufacturers in China and creating your own molds and stuff like that, which costs a lot of money, but what you're doing is you're taking products that already exist, similar to dropshipping and Amazon FBA and whatnot, and you're, you're literally making your own brand out of that product, okay? All right, so let me give you a little bit of backstory, right? So before I got started dropshipping, I actually, like, so with dropshipping, a lot of you guys who've been following me for a while, you guys know I got started in the fashion space, right? So my first store was selling men's accessories, okay? So I was selling rings, necklaces, hats, shades, all that kind of stuff. But before I even did that dropshipping, I actually did that private label. So what I mean by that is I actually started a brand, which is where we're going, okay? So. I had a bunch of inventory, I had boxes because I did custom packaging, I had the actual product with their own brand and everything on that guys. It's all at my parents house, so we're driving to my parents old house right now. Um, so I can actually show you guys and kind of show you the actual process of what I was doing before that. But I spent and lost $10,000 doing this because I didn't know how to market, okay? Ultimately you can have a really good product, you can have a really good brand, but if you don't know how to market you're not going to make money. So that's that's the main issue, that's why it failed and that's why with dropshipping I saw some success because then I focused all my effort on actually getting exposure from my website and driving traffic. So that's where we're going to go right now is actually to my parents house to look at these boxes so I can actually show you guys what I'm actually talking about. But better margins, right? Let's talk about that. Margin wise with dropshipping, right? you sometimes can see upwards of 40% margins when you dropship if you, if you know what you're doing. With Amazon FBA again, margins are slimmer. With eBay arbitrage, those are very, very slim margins. Now with private label guys, the margins, they can literally upwards of 60 to 70%. And it, again, it's if you know what you're doing, right? So when you private label, you're creating your own brand. The people that you know that do FBA on Amazon, they'll say that's very similar, and it is, but the fact is you're listed on Amazon's platform and that's usually it, okay? You don't usually have your own established brand. You aren't actually brand building, okay? You're just listing it on another platform. Now with private label, you're literally building your own brand from scratch, right? So you're giving it a name. All your products have have that name on it. You have inventory of your product. You're getting custom content with you know photographers and all that kind of stuff to build your own brand. Again, I'm going to show you guys. This. I'm going to show you guys all the social media I used for my first one. Because again, I did I did the steps right, but I didn't know how to market. That was where I failed at with my with my first private label. That's what I started to do now. And that's why I think you guys should go to that after you get started in e-commerce. So like after you start drop shipping and start bringing some money in, move to private label. Okay, you can even convert your drop shipping store to a private label brand down the road. When I'm dropping right and what I preach, you know, in, in, in my courses on, on my free content, on all this stuff is to treat your dropshipping store as if it's its own brand, right? So if people can tell you're drop shipping, then you're not drop shipping right. And this is like that's that's the case with a lot of this. But when you private label, you literally are are your own brand, okay? And that's what I'm trying to get at. And with that guys, it takes a little bit more capital to actually get started with private label, all right, than drop shipping or you know most of these other other things like FBA and eBay arbitrage, stuff like that, where it's very, very easy to get into, right? But with private label, it takes a little bit more money to start up, right? Because you have to order inventory. You need to talk with suppliers, design your custom packages, design your custom inserts for the packages, right? And then you're not designing products yet, you're slapping your name onto products that you want to basically like brand as yours. Um, and stuff like that. So it does take a little bit more money to actually get started with, but again, the margins are a lot better. You build your own brand, you get people to stand behind your own brand, okay? And from there, you're, like, you're building customer loyalty, you can you know build um, recurring customers with, with purchases, all that kind of stuff, instead of drop shipping, where most of the time, it's, you know, most of your revenue is from new customers, or, um, you know, sometimes you can have, you know, 20, 30% of monthly revenues come from emails from people that, you know, have opted in, um, stuff like that. But with, with actual private labeling, you're building your own brand, you're building your own, you're literally building your own company. Like it's actually owning your own business, right? With dropshipping, you're just utilizing other products that are there and you're, you know, you're slapping a, a higher price tag on them and then shipping them elsewhere. Oh, all right, so we're pulling to the gas station because this puppy, 
heats up, guys. This, dude, this is my third time filling up in three days. This is right by my parents' house, so after this, we'll be spot on so I can show you guys kind of what I'm talking about with the whole private label process, what it looks like. Now, I to keep everything at my parents' house because there's literally a bunch of cardboard boxes. Like, I can't fit that um, where, I, <laughs> where I live. All right, let's fill this up. I'm literally spending like $80 a day filling her up, bro. Ooh. The, the nice thing about private label is that, and the, the reason why I like it over dropship, right? Because even, even when I'm dropshipping, I emulate private labeling because you're creating your own brand with your own custom content. In a way, it's like it's like dropshipping and it's like print on demand, and in a way, it's very similar to Amazon FBA, but it's like the legit version of all three of them. You know, with dropshipping, they're not your own products, right? They don't have your own logo on them 90% of the time. With print on demand, right, it's, it's your own designs, but again, your margins are ass because it's print on demand, right? You don't actually have inventory, so you're not buying in bulk and the products aren't as cheap. And then with FBA, right, you usually do have your logo on that, but again, it's on another platform. There's no actual brand behind it, so you're not building something for the long term, really just capitalizing on, on Amazon's platform. So the nice thing about, about private label, right, is it's literally like the real version of all three. And, and that's, that's the nice thing. So again, you're doing custom content because you're building your own brand. Right? You're building yourself. The products are yours, okay? And again, it's not like you personally have to ship out all the products yourselves, right? Again, that's one of the mistakes that I did when I first started, right? Is I had the inventory, right? Which is why I'm gonna show you guys it, which is nice for this video. But you can always use like a pick and pack or a fulfillment center um, to do that yourself, right? So again, that's not something you need to really worry about. But the nice thing is, is you do buy in bulk. And you, look at that shit, bro. $75 for a fill up? 18 gallons. Three days in a row. Three days in a row. I've been driving this too much. All right, we're about five minutes away. My parents, I haven't seen them in like a week, a week and a half. I haven't seen the dog. We have such a cute dog. Those three, those three things like drop shipping, print on demand, and Amazon FBA, like they're they're more they're more popular in private label because they're easier to get into, right? So that's why I say you start with drop shipping, figure out you know how to actually market before you're actually working with your own products, right? Because again, that's where it gets a little bit more expensive is when you bring in your own products, you bring in your own packaging, you bring in your own um, you know you're working with your own suppliers and all that kind of stuff. That that's where it gets expensive, right? So that's why I encourage people to go drop ship first figure that out, figure out how to market, okay? Because that's why I failed at my first private label brand, guys. I didn't know how to. Sometimes you just, sometimes you just gotta do it, you know? That, guys, that's why I failed. It's because I didn't know how to market. So that's why I encourage drop shipping so you can actually learn marketing without having to worry about your own products, your own brand. And that's the nice thing too, is if you, when you figure out dropshipping, right? Because again, you can literally get started dropshipping for less than $100. Like, I literally did that because I was broke when I, when I first started dropshipping, um, you know, when I was on break from college. And that, that's where you figure it out. That's where you learn everything, guys. That's where you start to bring in this passive, re like, income, right? Is with, with dropshipping. Now, once you do that, right? So what I did, right, is I, I used my dropshipping store's profits to fund other companies, right? So I moved into software. I moved into SaaS because of my dropshipping source profits. Right? I was able to use that and invest that into other projects. Now, what I also do is I, I keep, like I stay in the e-commerce space with private label companies, okay? Because again, the margins are a lot better. And once you have the money, once you have like the, the network and the know-how, right, that you can learn from dropshipping is, is you know how to do everything. Right? You, you already are on AliExpress when you dropship, right? Now all you gotta do is go to Alibaba, right, which is the, the bigger version, and actually work with the suppliers there, right? So the AliExpress is like the products are already there, you buy them, right? Alibaba is where it's more of like supplier side where you're actually ordering in bulk, ordering in quantity, and we're about to pull up to my parents um, right here, but you are you already have the experience of working and contacting, you know, suppliers. Now, it's just a matter of do like making it yours, right? So it really is as simple as slapping a logo on, right? So for example, if I was selling bracelets dropshipping and I wanted a private label, right, which is what I'm gonna show you guys in a second, it's bracelets but with my logo on it. It's packaging with the logo on it so it feels like it's my own company. And it, and it is at that point once you start private labeling. All right, so we are here. But where I live, right, I don't have enough room to put all these cardboard boxes and my parents didn't either, right? So we still have stuff in storage. But if you look over here, all these Home Depot boxes, are my own, my old, literally private label products, right? So I'm gonna take these out in a second after we go say hi and then kind of show you guys, show you guys the process. <laughs> hi, Kim. Have you got the time? Hi, Mary. Rosie. Mm. Oh boy. What are these boxes? <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, this is a little, for, for, for the OG subscribers that know, like this was my first store, um, drop shipping. And to avoid the Shopify hold, I literally had my own, my own, well, this is my own packaging, right? Curator of luxury goods, the nugget. Swipe up. Look at this, hashtag welcome to the gold mine. All the social medias, guys. Come on, we be drop shipping the good way. Oh yeah, look, okay, so guys, this was this was the, the bigger version, right? So we had different products, so this was just the, the fatter version of that of that same small box right there. Like this one, I think we would put hats in if they purchased hats. This one is more for bracelets. This stuff, the actual part, you see the hats, the shirts, this is all stuff that we sold on The Nugget, which is, again, the first shopping store. I already made a video on that um, before. So I was drop shipping and I was also working with brands um, to, sell, to sell their product, right? So these are hats. And we're getting close, guys. But this, this is the actual private label brand, right? So this was the packaging. We were selling bracelets, okay? Uh, luxury bracelets, like expensive, expensive ass bracelets that I was getting off of Alibaba. Working my suppliers. The bracelets would probably cost me around $20. I was selling these guys for like 100 okay? But the packaging, so this was a gloss, a gloss finish. We had three bar and co, three strikes there. They pull this out. Again, this, like, this is the packaging, guys. This is what I'm telling you guys about. And we have a bracelet in here, okay? Now, if I find the actual box that has all this stuff, I can show you guys <laughs> literally the 500 ones of those and the actual bracelets with the logos and everything on there. Here we go. Is that drugs? <laughs> Welcome to private label. Now, this is what I did to stay organized. I literally went to Office Depot, grabbed like the little label printers and I printed this like, so like, cause again, customers would receive this too. This was uh, literally BS, so I'd make up some random load so it looks official. Cause again guys, like presentations, everything, they, you need to make them think you're a big company, okay? So I had some random words here, so they thought that was kind of important, all right? Then I had our, our, our name, our logo, and what the actual product was. So this is rose gold mesh bracelet. Let's see if it's actually in here. Okay, there's one in here. So it opened this up, it's a little bit dusty. Okay, logo's there, matte finish, they take this out. There's a bracelet in here, and this was literally just, I think this was our cheapest product we sold, okay? But it was literally just a magnetic rose gold plated bracelet that they could just wear, right? Stuff like that. Look at the back of these, so glossy black mesh. So this was rose gold, this was glossy black. Again, just bullshit like this. I'm gonna find some random ones in here, boys. All right, so this one was called the Compound Bead Bracelet. Again, I'll show you guys the social medias for this company in a second. Open this up. So this was a bead bracelet, right? It was a mix with like a leather rope and a bead bracelet. And if you look here, at least it's three bar and co, all right? So this is the beauty of private label, right? So you have your actual name on all the products. And again, this is like a very simple product, right? I didn't, I didn't make this product, this already existed, okay? I was literally having suppliers that own the product slap my, slap my name on there, so then I could brand it as my own product and thus sell it as, as my own product, okay? I wanna find one of the, um, the really expensive ones that we were working with. So again, guys, like the, the rose gold here, the mesh bracelet, this one only costed probably $2 per bracelet, okay? Then with shipping, like the, the actual packaging and the insert here with the, um, that actually holds the product, right? All together for this $2 bracelet, right? Maybe, maybe five or $6 as our cost of goods. And we could sell this mesh bracelet, I, I believe it's selling for $55, okay guys? So again, as margins wise, we're doing really, really well, okay? Obviously that doesn't factor in, you know, the cost of the acquisition of, you know, Facebook ads, um, you know, per purchase, stuff like that. But that, 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 that's where we have room to play with, right? Because we're selling it so high. Because we own our own brand, we can dictate the prices. It's not like competitor focus, right? It's not like drop shipping trends where you're competing with every other person that's trending, um, you know, that's selling that trendy product. And it's not Amazon FBA, where you're competing on an entire platform where people selling the same stuff and you just got to go for, usually for the lower price point. Um, something like that. It's like you own your own brand, you dictate your own prices and you can charge a lot guys if the content, if the brand speaks, like if, if the brand feels that, feels that valuable um, from a customer's perspective, right? So again, that's mostly social media based because that's where we were driving most of the traffic with this one. Um, so I'll pull it up in a second. I want to find one of the expensive bracelets um, to show you guys. Because this one we use, the, the most expensive bracelet guys, we use Stingray leather. Um, and that's the one that we sold for quite a bit. Now it's just a matter of actually finding it. This is not it, I don't think. Yeah, and this is another bracelet, guys. So again, this was a bracelet company, right? I know a lot of people, the drop shipping, a lot of people that even hop in the course, they, they start drop shipping fashion items. And this, like, I hope this serves as some motivation, guys, because like, I was drop shipping fashion items. Um, before that, I was doing this, right, with my own brand. Um, I believe, if you guys can see that real quick, right? This one's hard to put your logo anywhere, but I still got suppliers to put the three bars of our logo right there on that. I don't know if you can get that in the camera, but there's three little etched bars there um, on that silver bead. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> yeah, I got it. Okay, right, there we go. Um, stuff like that, guys, just to make it seem exclusive and actually just have that that brand building um, in there. Now, let me find the actual Stingray ones. 
we're getting like uh, with the suppliers you can usually get higher quality materials and higher quality builds but um in just terms of adding the logo guys it just adds more presence like like all the small things matter when when you're doing e-commerce now oh my god i don't know where i'm gonna find this so guys i had hella inventory okay because again i didn't really know what I was doing. Oh, okay. Well, this is not. A, so this is Python leather. Okay. So this is another one of the expensive ones I can show you guys. Um, again, same sort of build out with the product and whatnot. The pull out tab. Open this up, and then now we have semi leather with you know gold plated um, stuff like that. And again, very small. Actually, I'll take this out real quick um, so you guys can kind of see. We have our logo right there, just etched in Three Barn Co. I don't know if you can get that. All right, yeah. So this was one of the higher end braces that we sold, um, you know, on our store. So like that, guys. But that, that's that's the gist of it, guys. It's just like with private label, you have a lot more flexibility in terms of your brand. You have a lot more flexibility in pricing. Cause that's 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 the the gist of it with with print or <laughs> not print on demand. <laughs> private label is again you. It's it's making your own brand. You dictate your own prices, guys. So again, it's you don't really have to worry too much about competitors in that kind of sense, right? Where if if your content speaks for itself. Um, and stuff like that you can you can really dictate whatever you want now i'm gonna pull up uh, social media for this one just so you guys can kind of see um what we were doing online so the social media was literally called three bar and co and then i made an additional one called three bar lifestyle just to try and bring in more people um but this was the first one three bar co guys this is a while a long time ago this is usually how i position a lot of my dropshipping brands too guys is the first um you know the first sentence of it is going to be something just to to kind of like give some sort of vibe or exclusivity to your brand. All right, and next one was our Snapchat and then worldwide shipping. All right, so people anywhere would know like, okay, we go everywhere and then explore below and then the website, all right? And then in terms of content, guys, so our content that we were doing was a lot better than 99% than of, of, of people trying to do e-commerce, trying to do stores and stuff like that. Stuff like that, so again, we had the bracelets there. They weren't always the main function of the photo like the main the main emphasis of each photo but that's that's the that's the part with content right is when you're doing your own custom content when you're kind of especially with with e-commerce guys is the the content you take isn't always just about the product right you can have really good product photography which is good and necessary but the photos you're posting on social media most of the time need to invoke some sort of emotion uh, like from from the uh for, for, like from from the potential buyer right so with all this kind of stuff it's, it's a lifestyle you're selling a lifestyle even though you're selling products, okay? You're selling a lifestyle to the consumer's mind, and then you want them to think about purchasing the product before they've even, you know, purchased the product, right? So that's the entire point of having this, you know, this custom content, um, stuff like that. It's just people and like invoking some sort of emotion, invoking some sort of thoughts um, into the head. And again, just associating it with higher, higher price stuff. So we got Yeezys right there. Um, simple stuff like that. Um, those were the mesh bracelets that I just showed you guys. Um, but that was the social media guys. Um, website isn't live anymore just because I don't pay for it. But now that that's that's basically the video guys. So like I wanted just to show you guys that print like private. I keep saying print on demand. Private label is the go-to in the e-commerce space after you've sort of mastered drop shipping or print on demand or FBA whatever whatever you decide to do. And right, it's like what I do and what I teach is drop shipping because that's what got me started. Right, that's that's when I first saw my success. Right, because all this stuff, this is here because I failed. Like because I, I couldn't market this product. I couldn't I couldn't get it to move. Even though the brand is cool, the products are cool, all that kind of stuff. It's cool and like even today I have people going like yo relaunch it like this will be really good like I'll buy it from you and that's the point is like when you know how to market stuff guys you can sell anything so once you figure out dropshipping once you actually like understand how to dropship and how to build a brand around a dropshipping product then when you actually move in to private label and start your own products get your own products get your own packaging and stuff like that your margins will be it, it's literally just imagine dropshipping but with with you know 10x better margins that's what this is, all right? So that, that's that's why I'm kind of making this video to show you guys like, okay, after you master dropshipping and you're looking to move elsewhere, but it's like still in familiar territory, look at look at private label, guys. It's very, very similar in that sort of industry. And the margins are better, guys. So that, that wraps it up for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like. Don't forget to comment. I respond to everybody's comments. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. We're doing a lot of more video, a lot more lifestyle stuff. So I hope you guys kind of like this kind of like out of the office um, sort of video. Big shouts to my boy, Kai filming and um yeah i'll see you guys in the next video guys don't forget to subscribe catch you guys later peace